So it is now Sunday. It is the third and final day of the D23 Expo. It's currently 10.30 in the morning. I had a an amazing, delicious, fantastic 12 hours of sleep last night in the hotel bed. Mm. Mm. Felt so good. I'm energized. That was the first full night of sleep since Tuesday night. It's pretty much just been naps since Tuesday night. I mean, I was sleeping in my own bed at home on Wednesday night, but that was only three hours. That's pretty much just a long nap, you know? I was debating between the black hat and these ears because I have the black leggings and since the shirt's so patterned, I thought it might be, you know, conflicting patterns here. I'm looking like a Lula Rohan or something. This would kind of tone down, help tone down the pattern, but I kind of want to save this for the park tomorrow because it's just something new. Like I've worn this one to the parks before. So I'm like, what if I wear this one? And because my hair is probably going to be more nasty tomorrow, so I can just cover it up with the hat. <laughs> this is my outfit. Wee woo. <laughs> I'm wearing the big shirt, but I'm tying it up like I did at the last expo because it's so big. It's just way too loose on me. It's like a big men's shirt. The sleeve even comes down to my elbow, which is, you know, it's very long. It's a huge baggy shirt. It's super frumpy, so I tie it up a little just to... Make it look a little more fashionable. You could roll up the sleeves too, but I kind of like the look of the long sleeve because the length of the sleeve is about the same length as the shirt right now. I don't know, it's cute. People don't tie up their shirts anymore, but whatever. Jacob's already at the expo. He left pretty early this morning and he went in and did some early shopping. And now I'm gonna go meet up with him. I'm just debating whether or not I should get food before going to the expo hall or get food there. There's a Denny's pretty much right next to us, so I might get some food there. The whole time I was getting ready, my stomach's just like, <laughs> that's all I could hear the whole time, and I'm like, calm down, calm down. <laughs> we'll get there. So I'm at Denny's, and I got the Grand Slamwich for the first time. I've only eaten half of it, and I'm full. Like, look at this. That's like a full sandwich, just one half of it. Okay, I didn't want to waste it, so I ate a bit more, and then I ate the top piece of bread. <laughs> I really like the mirror. So we're approaching the Thomas Kincaid booth. I have a tangled print of theirs. I have a small Beauty and the Beast one that I got at the last expo for free as part of like our sorcerer package. I really need to frame that. But Jacob was here this morning and he managed to snag me a pin because they had pins of the Beauty and the Beast oh. art. Oh, I've never seen this one. That's cute. Look at the colors. They feel so magical. Ooh. What I don't like about the canvases they do is they're they're square, and so it cuts off the sides. These ones are of better proportion. I think the print I was this one. And the pin is this one? Yeah. So then I have one of each? Yeah, baby. Oh, I'm still tempted to grab this. This looks, my print's a little wrinkled. I'm sure if I just frame it though, it'll look fine. These are only 40 for the little ones. Do they have that aerial one, maybe? They might, if I ask for it. I need this size. No, <laughs> look how huge this is. They have this one as a square one. And I kind of want the rectangular one. These big ones are hand embellished. I don't know if you can tell, you see like the thickness of the paint. Nice. You guys, check out this Elsa. That is stunning. <laughs> that light is messing with this. It's like impossible to film with the lights. I just went to this store here, the Disney Rock Love. I got the Snow White ring. This is probably not the best lighting for this, but yeah, I'll dig over the heart. Yo! Trying to get a slightly better look at this. Hot, hot. I just really wanted some kind of jewelry that wouldn't tarnish. Getting my official Dole Whip today. The float, which is the best one. I need the, yeah, I need the juice. Look at this beauty. Look at it. Oh my god. I'm 
still not used to all the Simpsons stuff. I'm like, huh. I feel like dreaming. Do you feel like you're dreaming here too? A little bit about me. I was born and raised in California and I'm in line at this last store right here. I'm here for that blue pin. Not that. That's just the floor. But who? We need a blue pin. Not blue pin. dealing with despair and difficult times, but also in all, all of your storytelling, which I love so much, it, there's hope. There's always hope. And I think I speak for all of us that we need you guys more now than ever. So, uh, no pressure. <laughs> always had that optimism to them, and his parks always had that optimism to them. He, but he wasn't afraid of showing all the sides of humanity, so he wasn't afraid of showing suffering and grief right. and, and ridiculous comedy. And, and it was all about the entertainment of it. So if you could take home a theme or something, great, but he was first and foremost about the entertainment and the experience that the audience would have. Because when we go to the movies, we want to know what it is to be human. Right. We want to know what it is to, to walk in the shoes of those characters, whether it's Pinocchio or Mowgli or whoever. Um, and that's what was so inspiring to me and, and you know, what we try to do in our movies now. And you do, so beautifully. Tony, now he, this is my great bragging right that I know that I know Tony. We've become friends and I'm so grateful for that. And last, uh, two years ago, we had dinner and I said, I gotta get you on Splash Mountain because he created Splash Mountain and it's, it's my favorite ride. And to get that picture, you know, when you go down the thing and they take the picture, to get a picture with me on the ride, Tony Baxter, take a look. <laughs> Wake up. Where is it? Where? Okay. Where is it? There it is. Hey! Look at my, look at my, look at my <laughs> dummy. I covered his face with my hand. <laughs> I'm taking you back tonight, though. Yeah, we'll do it again. <laughs> George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, Alfred Hitchcock used storyboards extensively to nail down his visuals. But it all started with Walt. It was all Walt Disney storytelling that. Uh, Gave us the storyboard. Is that you? This, these are your drawings. These are yours, right? From uh, yeah, I think I think so. Oh yeah, forgot I took my ears off for that presentation. Just you know, so I'm not blocking people's views. So we went to the storytelling panel. Then I was gonna go to a Tarzan panel, but then I mixed up what room it was in and realized that they were doing a voices panel in the main hall. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that on. The schedule and so I got in line for that but I got in line like right before it started so by the time I was 
at the front of the line. They had just started the presentation, so I was way in the back. But I, w I just wanted to get in there because there were gonna be so many voice actors there. I just I had to be there. And it was wild. I will include the footage at the end of the vlog because I did film a lot. I went in there thinking, oh, I'm not gonna film any of this. And then I filmed so much. I'll include some highlights at the end of the vlog just because it's probably gonna be a lot. They had the voices of Donald, Mickey, Goofy, and Pete, and they were doing a little bit on stage and even referenced Kingdom Hearts. I screamed. <laughs> they had a bunch of the princess voice actors up there, including Ali Carvalho, who came out at the end and sang How Far I'll Go live. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I'm blown away. I'm like, oh. So that was a really great way to end the con. Everything's pretty much closing now. I don't think the show floor is open for much longer. I wonder if they're still letting people into the gold member lounge. They're not letting anyone into the gold member lounge since everything's closing, but they were outside the lounge handing out little pop sockets. All you have to do is show your gold member card. So, yeah. Oh. Well, I'm heading out. That is a wrap on the D23 Expo of 2019. If you can hear me over the water. We are now on our way to downtown Disney. We're going to go to the Disneyland Hotel to go to what's it called? Trader Sam's. Trader Sam's. Well, this is very cheeky. Why is it cheeky? Maybe this is the cheeky way. I want the poop of letter. You can get alcoholic dole whip. There's my cooking platter. Oh, and dip. To consolidate the voices, so there was always one voice, so there was consistency. And I said, Gorge, I can try to do a goofy voice. And uh, <laughs> they seem to like that a lot. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, off and running, I, 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 so I started January 23rd, 1987 was my first goofy job and it's been uphill ever since. <laughs> you, you always just tell us that as a kid you used to sit in front of the TV and, and just imitate things like Captain Crunch. And oh, I would. I would, you know. Oh, hi, ladies. It's Captain Crunch cereal. Stays crunchy, but no. Hey, rookie, watch me pull a rabbit out of my head. You know, and uh, I... Uh, hi, ho. Ricky Frog here with Miss Piggy. <laughs> Any kind of voice I could. Exit, stage left. Yeah. <laughs> and you also do Pluto for us, right? Oh, absolutely. Pluto, I, I can bark actually in all languages. Really? <laughs> in English, it's well. You know, in German, it's well. French, it's well. <laughs> and a Coca Cola, and I sat it down on the edge of the, the mixing board. And, but I didn't put it down solid. It was like half on, half off. It started to fall. I grabbed it. I hit the neck. The bottle started spinning, <laughs> spewing Coke all over a probably couple of hundred thousand dollar audio board. <laughs> Engineers are going, ah! <laughs> Goofy follows me around and all you, the time. Now. And you had a little Goofy moment just here at D23? Oh, I, I did the other day. I was at the Legends Luncheon and I was saying hi to Catherine Beaumont, the original voice of uh, Wendy and Peter Pan and Alice in Alice in Wonderland. We were talking, and I backed up, and like, oh, ran into someone, and he said, well, watch out, and I looked up, and it was Bob Iger. <laughs> I'm going, sorry, sir. <laughs> He's got a great sense of humor, and I'm still here, so. <laughs> And, and so, Brett, this is 30th anniversary for Disney Cared Voices, but your 10-year anniversary, right? Yeah, You've been it's, doing the it's voice hard to believe. Since 2009. <laughs> what have these 10 years been like for you? I mean, uh, getting the gig of Mickey Mouse, come on. 
I, I don't know how to answer that. Um, in some ways, it's it's flown by. In other ways, it's hard to believe that it's been ten years. I feel like I've had a lot of amazing experiences. Um, I've I've learned a ton. I'm still learning a ton. And um, but overall, it's just it's it's incredible. I'm, I'm still kind of it's a, it's a surreal experience for sure. Over the years, I I've discovered on how important these characters are to people in their lives. Uh, and that's meeting the fans, because so many people have come up, say, from a goofy movie. People would say, I couldn't talk to my dad. <laughs> well, thank you. They, and they would say, I couldn't talk to my dad until we saw that movie, and it opened up a whole new relationship. I went with Clarence Nash to across the street from Disney to St. Joseph's Hospital, and there was a, a little girl who was crying. If she had her tonsils out, and the nurse said, she's she's gonna hurt herself if she doesn't stop. And Clarence had his uh, duck puppet and he went up to the little girl and said, shut up! <laughs> she did. <laughs> we could tell stories for, for hours, but um, I think maybe what you guys would like to hear is maybe them do the voices. We've got a special script written specifically for D23 with these guys, but every good script needs a uh, a villain. So in our script today, we've written in the game's constant nemesis. So please welcome to the stage, the voice of Pete, he's got really great sexy legs. Check this out, the one and only Jim Cummings. Folks are going to want to take pictures with us and get our autographs. <laughs> well, uh, where do you think we should set up, Mickey? Huh, um, uh, how about over here? Uh, this looks like a good spot. Out of my way, you yardsticks. That primo table is mine. <laughs> yeah, Pete, we spotted that table first. Winders keepers, Petey. Yeah, well, you losers are gonna be weepers. On account of because my fans deserve to see me in the best light and at the biggest table. After all, I need lots of space for my piles of pictures and foam fingers and signature bobbleheads and whatnot. Oh, uh, well, uh, I guess we can set up over in this corner, pals. Okie dokie, I got the table. And I've got our markers and our pictures. <laughs> well, uh, the crowd should be here any minute. Oh, hey, what's the matter, boys? Not popular enough? Or is everybody just here to see me? <laughs> Ah, uh, don't listen to him, guys. I'm sure we'll get lots of fans real soon. Gosh, I wonder how come nobody's stopping by to take our pictures. Well, uh, do you think maybe we should have worn our Kingdom Hearts costumes? <laughs> Security wouldn't let me in my keyblade. Oh. <laughs> Come on now, folks, stand back, don't push for the line. You still all get your photos and autographs. And don't forget to push yourself a bobblehead or ten. <laughs> no need to look at the knuckleheads over in the corner. Nothing to see there. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm gonna go give Pete a piece of my mind. Hey, Petey, it's wow, 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 you mean you want me to fall again? Yeah! And Donald, throw another tantrum. Everybody seems to love it! Wow! Wow! Hold on, Donald! We finally got to see our fans! Wait, 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 wait! Hey, folks, where are you going? Good to see How's you. How's come you're lining up for those chowderheads? I'm the pretty one, and I got the best merchandise. 
The problem is, those kids grow up, and we have to recast them every few years. So we were super fortunate to find a little four-year-old um, to give him a super unique voice. So let's take a look at this. Mom! <laughs> Mom! Are you sure it's water sanitary? It's questionable to me. It's fine, honey. <laughs> Can't you see mommy's talking? <gasps> Watch out! There's somebody swimming! It's going right at you! <laughs> There's a little bit of nepotism going on because that was actually my son, Taylor Dempsey. And he just happens to be here today somewhere in the audience. Aren't you here, Taylor? How you doing, man? Wow. I'm great. I'm so happy to be here at D23. <laughs> There's something wrong. Then what happened? I I guess I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So Anthony's um doesn't quite sound like Miguel anymore. It's kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit sad. But you know, I found out that they were going to be casting for for Miguel because my voice changed. But I actually found out that they casted my little brother Alex, and you know that was so cool. <laughs> I tell you what, we got something pretty special. You look like you're dressed up to do some kind of like singing or something like yes, that. Yes, yes. Yeah, I thought it would be super fun for me to sing Remember Me, but for the Ooh. first time ever with my little brother, Alex. Oh. Well, let's do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, there he is, with Alex. For the first time ever, this is the original Miguel Anthony Gonzalez singing with his sound alike, his brother, Alex Gonzalez and the Mariachi Divas. Woo! Remember me Though I have to say goodbye Remember me Don't let it make you cry For even if I'm far away I hold you in my heart I sing the secret song to you Each time you're apart Remember me Know that I'm with you The only way that I can be until you're in my arms again, remember me. She dreamed of seeing life beyond the palace walls and stood up to a snake of a villain. Soaring high in the sky to a whole new world, it's the voice of Jasmine, the fabulous Disney legend, Linda Larkin! She stole our hearts as the provincial girl who wanted more than to have every day be like the day before. In fact, she wanted an adventure in the great wide somewhere. Let's bring her out. The incredibly gifted voice of Belle, and one of the sweetest people on the planet, the amazing Disney legend, Paige O'Hara! She was the star who ushered in what is known as the second golden age of animation. The one that started it all by voicing a teenage mermaid who wanted to be where the people are. Now she's part of our world and also a Disney legend. It's Ariel, the phenomenal Jody Benson. <laughs> I pinch myself every day. Though. That's right. <laughs> it's not like Legend Linda. Excuse me, Legend Linda. Um, you need to... I sort of like it at the end, like PhD. What? Linda Larkin, Legend. <laughs> <laughs> tons of fun. We had tons of fun. We had our 30th anniversary celebration. Thanks for all of you guys that came out. You brave people that came out. We, we've had a lot of fun. It was it was uh, it was emotional. It was exciting. I cried. I probably six times at least. Um, <laughs> 
but just getting to share the memories with the fans and it's all because of them you know that we're still we're still kicking we're still going that night the entire new york critic audience stood up for 10 minutes after the beauty of the beast that night and i think that's when we realized this is going to be a classic we knew them this is my Ariel for you, my beautiful girlfriend. <laughs> Joey and I have been friends since back in the early 80s with Broadway girls together. 39 years. 39, 39 years we've been, been friends. Now. Oh, oh wow. my God. <laughs> Linda, oh my God, and Linda. We've been getting really close in the last few years doing Comic Cons together, and we hang out a lot and eat pizza and have a great time. <laughs> and this is for you, Linda. You're Jasmine. <laughs> and Rick is right. These women are these characters. And Anika, I had the great privilege to finally meet you when we became legends together. But I've been a long time fan. And I hope that I get to work with you at some point. I do love that. I would love it. And this is for you, sweetheart. <laughs> Your beautiful piano inspires everybody. What you don't know is that I saw Paige you don't backstage. don't have to take him on the plane, we'll ship him to you. <laughs> I saw Paige backstage and, I, and she gave me a big hug and since the first time we met, she has been one of the warmest, most welcoming people. And you know, this is a pretty exclusive club, so it's really important when somebody reaches for you with open arms. And I want you to know that this is who she is. This is not for the stage. Yeah. This is this woman's heart. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. would do it on top of me and you know well not physically on top of me <laughs> lay, lay the voices on top of each other and we kind of go back and forth so that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference but most people don't know that I do Vanessa Mo most people don't know that you know but so. anytime you get to do a villain laugh is a good day <laughs> any villain laugh anytime you could be a villain laugh like a villain yeah one yeah <laughs> It was so fun. It was so fun. We had a great time with Pat. She was such a trooper to teach me how to kind of do her cackle. So it was fun. It was a really fun day. Bunny that won't take no for an answer. Ha! Yeah. Yeah. talented Jennifer Goodwin. Woo! I'm freaking out right now. Hi, I'll chat Guys, I don't deserve to be up here with you guys. So Jennifer, you're a big fan, I, right? Oh, I'm a Disneyphile. Yeah? Yes. Nika, to take this bell line and give us her best Tiana for a bell line. Let's see what that sounds like. Uh. <laughs> Tiana. Gaston, may I have my book, please? Well, some people use their imaginations. Gaston, you are positively prime. Wow. <laughs> All right, and Linda, why don't you give us Jasmine doing your best Judy Hops line? Hundred tickets? I'm not gonna write a hundred tickets. I'm gonna write two hundred tickets before noon. <laughs> And Paige, you get to do Jasmine's evil. Here we go. Jafar, I never realized how incredibly handsome you are. You're tall, well-dressed, and your beard is so twisted. <laughs> and 
Jody, you are going to give us your best Tiana. Okay. Uh, as Ariel. I'll do my best. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh no. No, no, no. There is no way I am kissing a frog and eating a bug on the same day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Jennifer, how would Judy Hopps give us that aerial line? <laughs> if only I could make him understand. I just don't see things the way he does. I don't see how a world that makes such wonderful things could be bad. <laughs> um, our most recent animated full-length musical was the film Moana. So here is one of our newer members of the DCB family. Now we're proud of the voice of Moana, Ali Carvalho. <laughs> Alright, we gotta get all the hugs in. Lots of hugs. You gotta, you gotta say hi to the princesses. Uh, uh, how to do that. Uh, <laughs> Ali, you have a pretty amazing story as to how you landed this role. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Okay. Hello. Um, so... I was a freshman in high school, and I was in school, <laughs> and I, um, my friends and I put together an audition for a nonprofit organization. And we were hoping to become the entertainment of the event, and like, raise funds for the event, and perform at the event, and have like a little star moment, and we didn't get it. But a casting director, Rachel Sutton in Hawaii, saw my audition tape with my friends and she said, who's that girl in the back row second from the left? And I was like, oh, hi. And um, she asked if I wanted to audition for Moana, of which I was like, I'm pretty sure they like, found someone already, right? It was, it was really serendipitous, but I said yes, and I got flown up and I got to meet Ron Clements and John Musker and Osa Not Sure, and I auditioned, and they liked me, and yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> Oscars, have to go with that. Great experience, right? Fun? Pardon me? Fun? Yes, sorry. You were all clapping so loud. <laughs> it was really nerve-wracking and exciting, and I, of course, had sung the song in the booth and had recorded it and had producers on the other side going, like, good job, but now it's in front of a live audience, and I was, like, Meryl Streep was, like, there. And I remember being so nervous and feeling like I had to puke and everything. But it worked out okay. That was amazing. <laughs> you were amazing. And it, I remember watching the broadcast and uh, you got whacked in the head with one of the flags. I did. You just kept going. Yeah. You were incredible. Thank you. Not I'm stopping, girl. I cannot going. stop you. Thank you. Well, okay, so it actually, so it happened <laughs> the day before in rehearsal. So I don't want to say that I wasn't rehearsed in that. We had talked about it and we were like, oh, make sure it doesn't happen on live television. And then it did. And, and I remember like thinking in the back of my head, I was like, it's the same guy. <laughs> we never figured out who it was. He, he held his piece. I'm going to stick with what I said before, but I'm also going to say, never be afraid to ask for help. We don't know how to do everything. Even the things that we are good at, we can get better at if we are free enough to ask the people around us to assist us. And sometimes people say no, and that's fine. Because in that no, you will find your yes, and you will keep moving until you find somebody who is inspired by you and wants to assist you to move on to what you want to do. Now. My advice would be to work hard, to keep an open heart, because you never know where this journey is going to take you. I, I totally agree with both of you guys, but I also say it's also good to rely on history, history of the art that you're pursuing, uh, whether it's art, whether it's acting, whether it's music. Know those great artists before you and way before you. From the turn of the century, I still learn from Beatrice Lilly. These people, um, you need to know your history, but also don't be afraid to take chances. I was taught that from my acting teacher in New York, Joanna Merlin, and she said, don't be afraid to take chances. If you fail, you just get up and you, you're better the next time and you learn from it. So uh, don't be afraid, guys. Just go for it. I agree. Amen. Um, 
brave, be courageous, take chances. But for me right now, I think in my life, live with no regrets. Savor every single moment. Life is so incredibly precious. And you need to savor every single moment because you don't want to go later and just go with, it, with those regrets. So that's my that's my life first for me is no regrets. No regrets. I would say study, learn everything, and then chuck it and do it your own way. <laughs> that is excellent advice I will be taking. Um, go beyond the reef. Learn as much as you can about yourself and others as well. Go out, have an open mind, be willing to learn about different people and their cultures and the things that they do and make an active approach to journeying to reach them as well. I think that's so beautiful. The world is so big. You are, you get to explore it. Do it. So Ali, you just to close us out, you want to sing a little song for us? I mean, as long as you guys don't mind waiting a little bit. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, Ali Cravalo singing her iconic song from Moana, How Far I'll Go. Enjoy this. <laughs>